Alright, so this is going to be a video about um, step two, and I feel like there aren't too many videos on step two, just because maybe people don't take this exam as seriously. Um, but the people who really should be taking this exam seriously is a number of people, and one is those who maybe didn't do as well on step one, and they want to improve their score a little bit before applying to residency, because you can choose to take it um, starting in July or something like that, down to December of your uh, third year, um, but if you choose to take it a little early, you'll have your score and you can, sh um, well, you'll have your score and you'll have to submit it on ERAS, uh, but those who did pretty well in step one will choose not to take step two and just submit their ERAS residency application without having to submit their step two um, in the chance that they don't do as well. So those of you who didn't do as well as step two want a chance to sort of, I guess, redeem yourself or show that you can continue to improve. This exam is pretty important. And then another thing is certain specialties like emergency medicine. This exam is pretty is like pretty huge because emergency medicine really is about knowing what the next step is and knowing what to do next, what's the diagnosis. It's pretty clinical. It's very clinical residency. And I mean, so is something like surgery. And so doing well in step two, which is such a clinical exam, it's really important to know your diagnoses, know your physical exam findings. It makes step two very important for you guys as well. Another thing, uh, just a tip on taking advice. Don't, I would take a grain of salt in taking advice from people who don't short, share their score with you. Uh, just the same way as Kaplan or DIT would tell you sort of some of their insight on how to do well on an exam without telling you how well their students did. Um, it would be the same way. And also, a score that somebody got may not be the score of what you got. Um, you want to sort of follow somebody who's in the range of the score that you got. So, okay, so just a little bit about step two. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit earlier, but it's not about um, where to find the content in your books. Rather, um, it's about knowing the content really well. They're not trying to throw zebras at you. Um, like in step one, I know sometimes they'll try to throw some weird zebras at you. Very rarely. Step two is really not about that. It's about being given information in a question stem, and interpreting it, and then finding the answer. Because they're going to be throwing bread and butter pathologies at you most of the time. Okay, I'm just going to really quickly mention shelf exams. For each shelf exam, try to buy like a case files book or some sort of question book for the exam and start studying it leading up to it. Um, UWorld doesn't have family medicine questions per se, so obviously for something like family medicine, I'd recommend buying um, a book or sharing the case files book with somebody and doing those questions. I would say for medicine and surgery, do all the medicine and surgery questions in UWorld, obviously. Really concentrate on the GI, renal, knowing what to do next. For surgery, definitely do uh, try to do De Virgilio. Um, that's the author of one of the books. And then there's also a Kaplan book. I think that's Pestana. That's also pretty good. Those are really high yield. De Virgilio is going to have a lot more detail, and so it's going to take you longer to get through something like that. So if you're really looking to honor surgery, I honored surgery, but I think I skimmed through De Virgilio because I didn't have much time. Uh, but I definitely did Pestana and UWorld and Online Med Ed. So I would definitely drill, drill those three and do the uh, algorithms and come up with your own algorithms. And I would write down sheets on if the blood pressure is unstable, you're going to be thinking this. The blood pressure is stable, that. Kind of that idea. Okay, so finally for step two, in terms of the question bank, I only did UWorld. Um, I did it a total of four times starting in March, and I took my exam in July. Um, so about March, April, May, June, July. About four months prior. Um, I think I started a little bit early, but I had also started UWorld in order to help with my some of my shelf exams as well. So I had already started UWorld at that point. You definitely don't have to start as early for step two is step one, I wouldn't say. The reason I think UWorld is so great is because really you gotta learn that information cold. And it's the best and most accurate resource that you're gonna have. They're really up to date. In fact, UWorld started off um, at first um, as a step two question bank, so they're really gonna excel with that. In terms of videos, I did the free online med ed videos and use those as a general outline. Um, you can also find their PDFs online and use that as a book. Um, I don't endorse torrenting or stealing any copyright information, and it's up to you to go and buy certain products. I didn't buy online med ed, um, and so I only used the free videos that was available online. So maybe if you wanted to know a little bit more about that, maybe ask somebody else, but I heard from people who've had their PDFs and their question banks. From him, the question banks are pretty detailed, it's very algorithmic, uh, but they're still really good review. It's very good information, and the free videos are really good if you want to get through them, get through the information. Um, by watching someone go through it with you. Because I know reading can be kind of boring. Now I'm going to bring up an interesting topic, and that's Goyon. Um, a lot of people say Goyon is more of a step one resource. Honestly, I think he's actually a really good step two resource as well. Um, in fact, if you can try to find the PDF that's remembered questions, 
that he has had in the past, that is really good to just read through and blow through those, um, especially if the topic came up on UWorld or Online Meta, read through what he has on there. Now obviously, Golion does go into the biochem and pathophys. That's more heavier on step one and not really on step two. But after taking my step two, I was literally kicking myself for not reading that Remembered Questions document again. I don't know if I would recommend listening to those Golion audio lectures. I think that's a little bit too much. That is, of course, more oriented for step one. So that, I don't think, is too necessary. In terms of flashcards, like always, uh, do flashcards how you want. I choose to do my own sort of Unki style, but I don't use Unki itself because it's too confusing for me, to be honest. But um, I'll make my own flashcards, and then a card that I don't know, I'll put it at the top of the deck uh, to do the next day or the same day again. Something I kind of know, I put it somewhere in the middle of the deck, and then something that I know pretty well, I put it at the back of the deck. And so it's kind of like my own Unki where it differentiates how well you know a card and when you'll come up with that card um, in the future. Where to put your information and what main book to use? Honestly, I've searched so much and there is no real one agreement on where to put your information. I used a mix of my old Step 1 first aid book, a new Step 2 book, first aid for Step 2, and then just printing off my own sheets of paper, making my own outlines and algorithms, because you're going to realize um, you're going to have to know algorithms for this exam because there's a little bit of detail on each question that'll change uh, the answer, change the diagnosis, and change what you have to do next just based on some information that they give you in the question. Reading the question is so important for this exam because you're not going to be getting just buzzwords, you're going to be getting physical exam findings. So how to approach this exam? Step two is a test of physical exam. I mean, straight up. If you don't know physical exam findings with someone for downs, for example, you will miss that question because they will do some because they will give you some physical exam findings that in Down syndrome that could be found in other um, trisomies or some other syndromes, and so you have to know it really well. So let me explain by giving you an example. So a 35-year-old smoker has been complaining of shortness of breath. That's pretty broad, right? Now they're going to give you some more information on the exam. You'll hear wheezes. Okay, so that's kind of nonspecific, because it could be asthma, it could be COPD, chronic bronchitis if they're a smoker, right? Then they tell you they do PFTs. All right, so during the next part of the question, they tell you that his PFTs are low. Let's just say his FEV1 and FVC are both low, but the ratio ends up being below 75% or something like that, of the FEV1 to FVC. Um, they give him an albuterol treatment, and all of a sudden his PFTs are normal after the treatment. So what's the answer? Answer choices include chronic bronchitis, COPD, and asthma. Well, the answer here is going to be asthma because his, in COPD, you don't normalize after albuterol treatment. So that's an example of really knowing the information that you've been given to and seeing what it translates to. Um, and I wish I could come up with a better example. That's just something I th thought of on the fly. But know the physical exam. I mean, that is just going to be huge for this exam. Um, I would even come up with like a table and sort of a spreadsheet um, in what each physical exam finding that you've ever been given on a question or online med ed or uh, first aid for step two, whatever, whatever it is that you use and then what it translates to, what it means, what it could mean, and a differential, coming up with that differential. Um, and then try to use some pictures as well because the majority of us are visual learners. Um, there's just no way around that. So Next part of the exam is knowing your best step, and this is so crucial. You'll have to know this for your shelf exams too, especially surgery. I mean, that's just huge. Um, like knowing what gallbladder imaging study to do next, when you have to take out a gallbladder, um, depending on what disease it is, do you have to take out the gallbladder urgently in the next 72 hours, an elective? They're going to give you all those choices and you're going to have to know what to do for a certain thing, for a certain uh, gallbladder pathologies. So in order to do this, again, create diagrams and do logarithms and come with a step-by-step -step way of approaching the information that you're given in the question. Again, an example that I used before to, to split it off is a patient comes in with abdominal blunt, blunt trauma, right? So blunt abdominal trauma, is he stable or is he unstable? If he's unstable, you're going to be doing a certain thing. Um, if he's stable, you're going to be doing some images first. For example, a fast, which is um, using ultrasound to see if there's blood in the abdomen before moving on to something else based on if the fast was positive or negative. Right. So I already created an algorithm and sort of a diagram. So again, knowing that sort of example, it's no wonder that um, residencies take TEPS, the step two score so seriously for emergency medicine. Because knowing what your patient's physical signs are, vital signs and imaging say, literally dictates their hospital course and what you're supposed to do next. So it's pretty important. In terms of specific, um, in terms of specific topics on the step two, in terms of microbiology, pathology, cardio, and GI, 
I really hit these uh, through UWorld as well as online meta using those videos. For repro, that was one of my toughest subjects, and the online meta videos are really great for that. But definitely try to come up with your own uh, mnemonics and diagrams, and I would even write down on my own new sheets and stick them into my first aid or have my own binder of sheets. Um, anything for you to really bring your head to or bring your mind to when you're on a question. Um, I would literally just like imagine the page that I was looking at kind of like photographically um, to try to get the answer right. So really otherwise there's not much to it. Step two is definitely, I wouldn't say an easier exam necessarily, but it's a more straightforward exam than step one. Step one is a very daunting exam, especially because you just started med school. Um, but now you know all the bread and butter, butter pathologies that you had to know for step one. Step two is just an extension of that, an even chilled down version of step one. But now you just have to know how to diagnose things specifically, know your physical exam, and know what steps to take next um, in order to diagnose something when, you're, when somebody comes in with a generalized chief complaint or issue. If you have any other specific questions, go ahead and comment below and message me. Subscribe if you want more information on med school and the processes of it. I think at, at some point I'm going to start putting up tutorial videos on some topics, uh, on some clinical topics that could show up on step one or step two. And thanks and good luck.